How's it going everyone? As you can tell from the title of today's video, my Turbo X is finally back and it's finally fixed after, well, over a year of not having it really running properly. So I get asked a lot about this car, any updates on it, things like that. So now that it is finally fixed, I wanna explain quickly once, real quick again, one, what the problem was, two, what the solution was, and three, what exactly they did to properly diagnose it. I wanna go ahead and summarize the issue it was having as quickly as possible just for the sake of time. Essentially, a little bit over a year ago, the car started exhibiting some really weird symptoms when I would corner. So pretty much whenever I would take a turn, specifically a higher speed turn, like something that would be like an, an interchange on a freeway that you're taking at like 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, the whole car would shake violently from left to right if you went above a certain speed or above a certain angle. Right after that started happening, I noticed that one of my old coilovers, actually the front passenger coilover, was leaking fluid all over the side. So I figured, okay, well my coilovers need to be replaced anyways now, they're very old to begin with. So I got brand new Maptune coilovers and installed those. That did nothing to fix the problem. I also tried new lower control arms, tie rod ends, end links, pretty much everything suspension wise. Uh, was checked. So after a while, I kind of just gave up on it and I really didn't drive the car for pretty much all of 2021. I maybe put a thousand miles on it, if that. Fast forward to about two months ago, I took the car to IMM, which is the local Saab shop here in the Phoenix area. They're actually based in Tempe. They've always done fantastic work on our cars and people in the community's cars in general, so big shout out to them. So I had them do a cross-wheel drive service because the car was due for that, and while it was also there, I wanted them to try and diagnose this issue. They had the car up on a lift. Uh, they checked literally everything that they could, bushings, you know, control arms, literally anything you could think of suspension-wise that would cause this issue, they checked. They also checked the steering rack at that time as well. They did have an old alignment rack there, and they said that because the car was lowered, they weren't able to fit it on the alignment rack. Because the other issue the car was having is it kept throwing itself out of alignment, which is really the main reason why I wasn't driving it, because it was destroying my tires. But now fast forward to about two weeks ago, I took the car back to them. They were going to raise up the ride height for me so it could fit on their alignment machine. Turns out actually with the stock wheels back on the car, it could fit on the alignment machine at, machine at the height it was at, so that works perfectly. Um, so they put it on the alignment machine. They saw that the toe in the front was off by almost an entire inch they said that's ridiculous I'll put a picture on the screen here of just how bad my tires were wearing from this issue so pretty much the tires on my other wheels are completely bad unfortunately and that's with not much driving I mean I've had those wheels on the car for 5,000 miles at the absolute most so they got it on the alignment rack and they still couldn't figure out what the problem was. But turns out once they backed it about halfway off the alignment rack and looked at it again, they did finally see that there were some gears within the steering rack that were bad. I'll go ahead and read this specifically from their invoice here. They said, checked alignment and found steering rack has internal play at rack and pinion gear, only under load. So that's exactly what they diagnosed it as. Now turns out V6 cross wheel drive steering racks are no longer available new. Now someone on Instagram who's very helpful, thank you, I, I don't remember your name off the top of my head, I apologize, was very helpful and pretty much told me that if I replace some of the lines, I could just use a front wheel drive rack, which are still available new. Now I didn't wanna make IMM do all that extra work and cost me more in labor, so what they did is they sourced a remanufactured V6 cross wheel drive rack, that cost me about $600. They threw that in the car, they did an alignment, and it's all good now. I drove it home from IMM, which was about 25 miles. I've driven it here to South Mountain, which by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet. I'm about to take this thing up this mountain and do some pretty awesome, uh, you know, just a good old fashioned canyon run because that's really what I bought this car for. Wanna fast forward to future me here in the garage. And a reference to that last clip, I did end up taking the car up South Mountain. It was probably some of the best footage I've ever gotten of doing some canyon runs. No cars in front of me the whole time, just absolutely gunning it the way up. The car was handled so well, it was, you know, it was absolutely great. I loved every second of it. However, the audio for the clip got completely destroyed as per my luck. So unfortunately, there won't be a whole separate video, but as I'm done talking here, I will put in probably a couple minutes worth of footage that wasn't too bad audio-wise that hopefully you guys can still enjoy. But to wrap up this video, I just want to say that I am glad that this car is finally back. It's no longer a big paperweight sitting here. It is mechanically 
perfect now and I am just so excited about that. But with that being said, over the last couple months I've really kind of started to consider moving on to some sort of different car. Now I have a handful of cars in mind. I actually spent this past weekend test driving about five or six different cars. Um, and that pretty much means that in order to afford one of these new cars, I would have to let go of the Turbo X. Now this is something that I've pondered and I've pondered for months, like I've said, but I think it's time to officially, not officially, unofficially list this thing for sale. So I'll probably make a video here in the next week. Probably comes as a big surprise to a lot of you and I know I will 110% regret selling this car, but sometimes you just have to move on to something else. You know, I love my Sobs. I will always love this Turbo X and I will not be selling my Arc. I'll be keeping that. Some of you might say, why don't you sell your Arc and not the Turbo X? Well, this car is worth about a third of what the Turbo X is, but that's enough for this video. Again, I'm like 95% set on selling this thing, so a whole video will come once I have time to sit down right now and kind of talk about everything. Even just talking about it now is kind of making me sad, but uh, again, more to come on that soon, I suppose. So if you are interested, I guess just hold off for now. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys at least enjoyed seeing this happy end to finally getting this thing fixed. I'm definitely going to be enjoying it in the meantime off camera, but uh, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll roll some of the uh, non-destroyed short clips now of that canyon run, and I'll see you next time. Oh, almost got a little air. <laughs>